Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live. Good evening, I'm Anthony Carlo. Welcome to another episode of The Local Live on this Thursday, May 14th. We're here to bring you the only new show that covers the Mamaroneck, Larchmont, and Rhineck communities. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the news we have coming up tonight. Hey, green thumbs, pick up some eco-friendly gardening tips on this week's roundtable. Are license plate readers a good idea? See what Mamaroneck residents had to say. The Hispanic Resource Center Executive Director Zoe Colon says goodbye to our community and gets awarded for her hard work. Our Varsity Play of the Week goes to the Mamaroneck Baseball Team. There is a beautiful exhibit on Ireland being shown in the Mamaroneck Public Library and we have the story for you. Stay tuned. Did you know that we have some pretty famous neighbors? Check out what they had to say about the future of broadcast journalism. And coming up, we have the cutest kittens looking for a home. The proposed parking restrictions on Mamaroneck Avenue continue to be debated at the May 11th Board of Trustees meeting. This time, the highlight of the evening was a new resolution on whether or not the village of Mamaroneck should purchase license plate readers. A license plate reader is a device that would be attached to a parking enforcement car and scan license plates of parked vehicles along the avenue to enforce the two-hour maximum parking limit. The previously suggested idea of a two-hour limit would need to be enforced by either paying for a parking enforcement officer to walk the avenue, scanning registration stickers, or by attaching license plate readers to a parking enforcement car. One license plate reader, as mentioned at previous meetings, will cost approximately $30,000. Let's hear what residents and business owners had to say regarding this new development. As far as the license plates being read, I think the police department, if they want to read license plates for our security or to find people that have cars that are, that people have violated thing, that's fine for the police department to do. I don't think we should be gathering the information on, on parking spaces. People want to park in front of the stores on the avenue, it's always going to be a problem, but this is not the way to fix it. It really isn't. If you want to do it by space number, do it by space number. This license plate technology is not going to help anybody. I don't want to be watched. I don't think anybody else does either. I don't want somebody to tell me that on such and such a day, I parked here for how many hours? Why should you know that? I would say that if you do value privacy in any capacity, and I am aware, yes, that the police already have one. When I saw it, I wasn't happy about it then either. I'd be even less happy if there were more. So please, again, the license plate readers are the last thing that I would like in this town. The main concern of purchasing these readers is that, that they cannot recognize if a car has changed spaces. This makes them ineffective for enforcing the parking restriction, which is two hours maximum regardless if the car is moved. Open discussion will be available Tuesday, May 26th to further discuss about the new parking resolutions from Amaranek Avenue. Remember that if you want to watch the whole meeting, you can find it on our website at lmctv.org. Last Friday, May 8th, the executive director of the Hispanic Resource Center, Zoe Colon, said goodbye to our community after working for six years. She will be working with the Hispanic Federation, launching their Florida and Southeast operations. And so I'm really excited about that. Obviously, I'm really sad to be leaving here. But the reason why I can leave here really confidently is that we've built an amazing staff. They were already amazing, right? But we grew a lot, right? And so all the capacity that we've been able, so I'm not gonna make a second speech because there's no way I'm gonna remember all of this, right? But all the capacity that's built here and the love and everything, you just can't, I mean, you just can't replicate that, right? So so I, I felt confident leaving that even if for six months that they could be on their own because they're such a strong team. They really, really are. At the farewell celebrations, Cologne was honored for her hard work by both county and state level officials. Really, thank you on behalf of not only the county executive, but all the people of Westchester County for all the great work you've done here, building this resource center, which fills such a vital need for a very growing community that we all welcome, and uh, we're so glad you're here to help them along. And this proclamation reads about a lot of Zoe's accomplishments, but I'm just going to get to the most important part, that today, Robert P. Astorino, county executive of Westchester, does hereby proclaim May 8th to be Zoe Cologne Recognition Day in Westchester County. 
HRC, thanks to you and thanks to the board, has changed over time. It is dynamic. It is alive. And it is alive because of what you've done and the energy and your smile and your love. So it's an honor to be able to be here and celebrate and, and uh, a, a proclamation, a humble proclamation unframed from the State Assembly. We're, we're very frugal. But um, congratulations. And after, after Zoe conquers Florida, hopefully she'll come back. <laughs> At the farewell party, Zoe Colon took the chance to introduce the new director, Milan Bott, the former co-executive director of the Worker Justice Center, to keep working for the Hispanic community in Mamaroneck and Larchmont. Now it's time to take a look at what is trending in our local online newspapers. Last Saturday morning at 2 a.m., the snack bar in the Orienta Beach Club was destroyed by a fire. Deputy Mayor Luis Santoro said that if you are holding a flashlight, you couldn't even see it in your hand. The cause of the fire is unknown. Several hours later, another fire broke out at 677 Mamaroneck Avenue. Luckily, no one was injured. For more details, visit loha.com. The Mamaroneck Review reports an update on the Playland renovations. Standard Amusements, the company in charge of the renovations, added another $3 million to the reconstruction budget due to the conditions of the rides. This raises the investment into $25.5 million over a three-year period. A further tour of the Playland Amusements Park is scheduled on May 7th after press time. Since most skin cancer is caused by UV radiation, sun protection is critical and a sunscreen with a protection factor of at least 30 is recommended. Avoiding the sun at peak hours will definitely help and regular skin cancer exams are very important. If you know any younger folks, Tanning is definitely not healthy for your skin. For more information, visit lohut.com. If you haven't read Mamaroneck's Hamilton Hub lately, Westchester veterans will be honored and celebrated for their service on Sunday, May 21st from 11.45 to 4 p.m. at Rye Playland. Westchester veterans need to pre-register for the event by May 20th at one of the offices listed on Hamlet Hub. And for our art fans, Mamaroneck Daily Voice reports that artist Piero Manrique completed several elaborate murals at the New Rochelle Metro North train station. It took him 10 weeks to complete the floor-to-ceiling murals, so definitely go check them out during the ribbon-cutting ceremony, which will be held on June 17th from 5.30 to 6 p.m. Those were the stories in the media this week. I'm Christian Sokolay. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Join us after the commercial break as our roundtable learns eco-friendly gardening tips from the president of Green Jay Landscaping. How does your garden grow? Is it grass or weed? Trees versus bushes. We're talking gardening, landscaping, and all things green. I'm Maura Carlin with Mike Witt. And as always, you can join the conversation and get your questions answered by phone, email, or tweet. The contact information is seen on the screen. And we are joined this evening by Jay Archer, president of Green Jay Landscaping, which focuses on ecological landscaping and organic land care. Jay, thank you for joining us. And let's start with what is ecological landscaping? Well, really what that means is that we are primarily motivated um, as human beings to embrace nature. In our busy lives, sometimes we are too busy to consider the outdoors. How does, does everybody go outside, walk your dog? Other than that, mow your lawn, pay somebody to mow your lawn. <laughs> um, I'm personally motivated as a naturalist um, to feel it, to be present, to see the green, to feel it, to smell it. I love when I smell the new cut lawn. So is this try, uh, a way for us to get the environment safer, or keep it safer as we tend to our greenery or flowers? Yeah, safe is great, but beautiful 
Um, it's already beautiful. Westchester is beautiful. Um, what, if we could take the time, not just to smell the flowers, but really see how beautiful Larchmont is and Mamaroneck and Rye and our whole community, it, it is wonderful. And can we make it better? Absolutely. Um, how do we do it? Just little things. Well, what kinds of things should we do? Um, don't remove the leaves. Put the leaves back in the lawn. You see the signs everywhere. Um, You're talking about no more blowing? Or raking? Oh, well, maybe not. We, uh -huh. we, we're not saying don't blow at all. But yeah. yes, we can absolutely reduce blowing to a minimum. It's mostly unnecessary. It's a guy thing. We love to blow. We can't help it. <laughs> we love chainsaws. We love blowers. Uh, you know, it's a fun thing. Let's tell you the truth. Well, what I walk around with a blower and I blow myself. What happens like when, you, when you leave the, uh, the clippings on the lawn? It gives back the organic matter that has been lacking uh, to our soil in 50 years. For 50 years, you've been mowing your lawn and blowing off the topsoil and all the good stuff and giving it away and taking it to a landfill and paying for that. That's foolish. You talk about fertilizer? That's your fertilizer. That's your organic, natural fertilizer. So why did we all start picking up the leaves to begin with. I mean, that goes back a long time. It may not have been lowered. I'm lowers. not responsible for that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an old guy, but I'm not that old. I was born at night, but not last night. I have no idea. Let's talk about getting things growing. What's the best time of year to be out in your garden and get stuff, you know, in shape? Well, as my gardening professor, Ralph Snodford, said, five o'clock today, start to change your life today in a positive way. What does that mean to you? So, yeah, do something. Stop mowing and blowing away all the good stuff. And maybe also reduce the size of your lawn, because maybe you don't need a lawn. If your children are not playing on a lawn, then don't do it. And also, if you have a dog that lays on your lawn, don't never apply pesticides and toxic chemicals. Okay. Would you put your infant child and your dog on a lawn that has a sign that says pesticides applied, don't enter for 24 hours? I wouldn't. Right. Do you have any recommendations for types of uh, grass that, it, that does well in this area? That's that a great question. Yeah. Um, typically, believe it or not, the, most, the best, most productive grass seed is grown in Oregon. Because our climate matches um, Oregon. And it's called improved perennial ryegrass. The best thing that you could do, when, excuse me, my voice, when it comes to plants is biodiversity. Hmm. The more different species that you have, the better off you're going to be. If In what you, way? What, what makes it better? Just from, from a visual standpoint? Or it's better for the soil? Aesthetically or? visual, yes. Do you like hummingbirds? They're fine. Butterflies? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fine. <laughs> I love hummingbirds and butterflies. I'm a bug and bunny person. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what that means is like we left the job today and the last plant that we just put over there, we walked away and Laura says, oh, here's the monarch. 90, 90, <clears throat> excuse me, 90% of the monarch butterflies have disappeared in the past several years. Part, partially was a sandy and disruption in the environment. Mm -hmm. Partially was there's no host plants. We want to bring in <clears throat> more native plants to attract more beneficial insects so you don't have to kill things. Well, what plants are yeah. native to this area? It's great native plants. Uh, milkweed, um, which is uh, butterfly weed, okay. not butterfly bush. Butterfly mm -hmm. bush is great. It attracts butterflies, but it doesn't have a, a host a food source for the butterflies. There's a lot of plants that we can plant in our yard that are not food for us, but food for songbirds. Okay. And that's something we're interested in. Well, we, I have a, a question here ahead. coming in. Uh, this viewer wants to know, how do you reduce pollen? I get you, can we? Well, I, I think you have to talk to God about that. <laughs> I really have no you hear that clue. viewer? Talk to God. I think, you know, <clears throat> that, that's something we, we have to accept. In... Um, you, our human condition is a response, allergies, a response to our environmental um, sensitivities. If we eliminate pesticides, we'll be less sensitive to um, irritants in our environment. Pollen is an indicator that our immune systems are not what they should be. So we should work on our own human health to make ourselves stronger. 
Holland didn't bother the Native Americans, which I am one. My people have been here for 100 years, so I consider myself a Native American. Okay. And I'm still sensitive to pollen boys, my own damage to my immune system. Yeah. One of the things this community has to deal with is water problems and flooding. Are there things that can be planted here that would help alleviate that problem? Yeah, that's a great question. You guys are doing a very good job. Westchester County is tremendously proactive in stormwater management, as is the Native Plant Center, um, Sheldrake, um, Ryan Nature Center. Progressively, um, rain gardens instead of the great American lawn, and I made my living on you know lawn care, so um, I can speak from both sides of the ecological issue. But yes, there's a lot of native plants that will help um, manage stormwater, and can they're you name great. Some for us. Oh, clethra. The the most underutilized plant in America is French lilac. In our environment, has been replaced by clether, which is a Native American substitute for lilac. Okay. And it'll grow in, in drought and in um, inundation and flooding. And it'll help absorb water? Absolutely. How hmm. cool is that? Everybody should go buy clether tomorrow. Clethra. Five o'clock today. Can you Ralph spell that Ralph. for me? Um, C-L-E-T-H-A, I believe. Okay. R-A. R-A. Clethra. Okay. Um, there was an issue in the community about a year ago about bamboo. Can you explain why bamboo is a problem or shouldn't be a problem? I think that leads into the greater um, issue of invasive plants. Plants are invasive as weeds. A weed is the wrong plant in the wrong place. There are places where I actually love bamboo. If you have ever been to, um, to Japan, bamboo is wonderful. Maybe it's not mm -hmm. ideal in some of our climates. Okay particularly because it, it, you plant it one place and it goes somewhere else. Okay. Maybe so that's that, not ideal. That becomes a design issue. Okay. So design for your place. I've got a viewer here. Okay. She starts out by saying, how hard is it to grow avocados? But she's not. Her, this is a real <laughs> question that's coming up. She says, I think it's pretty hard. So my question is, what are some easy examples of vegetables that you can grow in your own garden? Well, it really... Um, what is your intention? I think it's great to grow your own food. You have to consider where you're going to grow the food. Are you going to be able to exclude deer from it? So you can grow vegetables on your deck, which I do in rye, very successfully. Everything. On the deck avocados, in pots? No, I'm sorry. We don't Not grow avocados, avocados no. on the deck. But there's a tremendous... Uh, blueberries, everybody should plant blueberries. And um, raspberries because they're easy to grow. Mm. And even you can battle the deer and the other. Um, on the deck or uh, in the ground? With the no, berries. on the ground. In the so ground, very good. the bushes. That's very good, yeah. Everybody should have blueberries. Blueberry pancakes on Sunday morning? Come on, who doesn't want and that? And the birds love them, don't they? Yeah, oh, you can get from Gardens Alive, you can get a little hoop and screen them for the two weeks that they, <laughs> that they, that they uh, produce berries. Yeah. They're flowering right now. Yeah. Okay. And they're gorgeous, and they're a lot of fun. People seem mm -hmm. to have trouble with their tomatoes and the animals. Is there something special about tomatoes? And oh, is yeah, it's a human behavior issue. Right. Because we expect to plant them, and they just be all perfectly fine without us taking extreme care. Okay. So you need very good conditions, a lot of sunlight, number one, very good soil, which pertains to anything you grow. We, are, we have the, the tremendous resource of stone barns in Westchester. Mm -hmm, right. This is the best um, compost on the East Coast. Are you saying that, we, that the soil that, let's say, in our yards needs to be augmented or improved? Yeah, probably. And I don't want to speak for your mm -hmm. yard, but yes. Um, most of the yards that we see, soil is terrible because it's biologically sterile and poor because you've been taking all the organic matter the leaves and the clippings away for 50 years. You can't get it back overnight. Okay. What about the um, supplements people often put on the soil or the soil that you buy to grow things in? Good or bad? Good supplements are good. Okay. And how do you tell a good supplement from a bad supplement? Fewer chemicals? Um, guaranteed analysis. 
So we recommend you talk to Cornell, Cooperative Extension. That's what we call your tax money at work in mm -hmm. New York. Cornell's fabulous. Um, they're right so here. So you can get information from oh, them yeah. as to what you should be using. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to ask two basic questions. Okay. And they're grass related. How can you tell grass from a weed or a plant from a weed? Like, which is which? And then part of that is uh, they, the, uh, in the eye of the beholder. I look at you, I, I, I you love what you wear. <laughs> You know, I love what you're wearing. It's very stylish. I couldn't wear it. I couldn't wear it well. I don't know. Um, what is? What do you conceive of as a lawn? That's a great question. We have clients. We do not blow their lawn. No blowers. We recycle all the grass clippings. Is it a perfect lawn without pesticides? No. Um, and some weeds bloom at different times. Right. Sometimes they've got little we like purple that. flowers. Sometimes they have little right. white ones. And we like that. Well, I guess what I'm picturing <laughs> is that perfectly manicured green it's lawn. It's unnatural. Okay. Which brings me to the other side of the non-green lawn. We have a lot of rocks around here, and it seems like the grass around all the rocks is brown very, very easily. Oh, what that's so, oh, you're so much fun. I love this. <laughs> That was a string trim against the rocks. Throw out the string trimmer, and with you, what you can't get with a mower, yeah. don't whack with a weed whacker. It's a guy thing. We love whacking things. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not going to touch we that. We love blowing. So you're saying we should, we should uh -huh. leave the grass alone but around well, the rocks? Well, it's better than seeing brown grass against the rock. Right. What's wrong with that? Well, it just seems mm -hmm. like when it gets very hot. It's a matter of perception. In the eye to behold it, is that what's more attractive? To me, the grass is a little bit too long, but it's green. But if it's brown against the rock, that's not attractive. Right, mm -hmm. but what do you do to get rid of the brown? Paint it green. Take the lawn out, <laughs> take the grass out, do a rock garden. Do okay. beautiful flowering plants against the rock. How cool is that? You've been talking the whole time now about the great outdoors. What about the great indoors? What advice do you have for plants inside a house. I, I, I love when you asked me that earlier. Um, what we did in our own home is we did a living wall. Um, that means we did, we do it vertical gardens, indoors and outdoors. One square foot of indoor plants will clean a hundred square feet of your air. So we clean our entire lower level in the home of 12,000 square feet with a hundred square feet of plants, but we didn't stop there. Then we mm -hmm. built an ecotarium, an aquarium with fish, frogs, and turtles of 4,000, 400 gallons rather, that humidified the entire house for the winter and oh. kept the humidity at 35%. Because I have a grand piano, a lot of vintage guitars, and the human body likes to be at 35% humidity. And we like to have pure, clean air. So that's a very pertinent question. We have a lot of um, volatile organic compounds in our building materials. So mm -hmm. plants, wetland plants outdoors will clean water better than water treatment plants. Indoor plants properly selected, designed, will clean the indoor air better than purification systems. What about mm. the bugs that can be attracted? They don't bother you, but they do bother some people. In, in plants, you indoor... Indoors, indoors or out, outdoors. Either one, frankly. Biodiversity is my answer to everything. Uh, I live at the edge of a wetland. I invite, you know, well, not everybody, but <laughs> you can get a tour um, if you, you know, can't, can't see. We are on the edge of a wetland, 22 acres. Um, you would think it's mosquito heaven. You would. <laughs> but because of the diversity of songbirds, damselflies, dragonflies, um, all, all, all the wonderful insect eating, beneficial um, animals. We have a balance of nature. So yes, you're gonna get a bite once in a while. The reason why we have problems with um, Lyme disease mm -hmm. is we have an overabundance of deer. Not just the deer carry the deer tick, all the ground birds, all mm -hmm. the other animals carry that, that mm -hmm. parasite. Okay. So we need to bring back. Coyotes are coming back. It's wonderful. I don't have deer in the winter. Because you have coyotes? Right. We call them Bert. Because Bert's been very active, you know. So we have no sick deer. 
okay. which is very healthy for our mm -hmm. environment. And as you and would I, I do have another email. Uh, I guess listening to you talking about the indoors, uh, suggestions for growing vegetables in an apartment situation. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Um, there's lots of products. Technology is amazing. Biotech, biotechnology. You can mm -hmm. go on the Internet. Um, there's lots of non-for-profit groups, which we can give you a whole list. Um, Tower Gardens is one of our favorite. They have a whole... Um, you know, system that we grow indoors and outdoors with lighting. Um, if you think about how much marijuana is grown indoors in this country, well, you can grow anything. I, I guess that's proof fact, positive. Did you have, your own, did you have right. another question? Uh, I had a couple questions from a viewer in New Jersey. Okay, the Garden ha State. The Garden State, yes. And, and one was uh, about she trimmed uh, her hydrangeas way back because they were tall and stocky. And they're growing lush now, but she wants to know, will they flower this season? It's hard to tell without seeing it, um, mm -hmm. but she probably should have waited a little bit because you can't really tell. They start to um, foliate from the base. Right. So they might have continued to um, produce, oh. you know, leaves. But they, <clears throat> excuse me, the flowers are produced on the second year growth, which is usually up here. So if you cut them to the ground, they're not perennials. They're woody shrubs. Okay. So that means probably they won't flower if you cut them all the way down. So the advice would be don't cut them all the way down uh, Yeah. if you're going to trim them. <clears throat> yeah, like take a picture, go to Grover mm -hmm. Extension, and get some professional advice. Hydrangea oh. is like you need to know what you're doing. And the other question she had was about uh, trimming back uh, uh, rhodes, rhododendron, after they flower. Yeah, absolutely, after they flower. Rhododendrons are very challenged in our environment because they're not native for the no. most part here. So they got too wet last year. And then right now, if you're not watering, go and water your rhododendrons mm -hmm. today. But she says she sees buds, right. uh, and she doesn't want to cut the buds. Right, don't cut the buds. Okay. Yeah, and wait, I, wait. And right now, since we're a month behind, I would wait till July if okay. I had to answer that directly. Okay. And thank on you. that note, <laughs> we are out of time. I'd like to thank yeah. you, Jay Archer, uh, Green Jay. Um, thank you for joining us and enlightening us on uh, gardening. Thanks. Absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm so grateful to be here um, watching um, you guys, <laughs> you know, ex exchange <laughs> with your community. And uh, I'm Jay Archer from Green Jay Landscaping, and thanks for watching Westchester Live. That's right. And stay tuned. We have more Local Live coming up right after this. Hey guys, you're watching the Local Live. Stay tuned. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> This week in sports, the Mamaroneck baseball team notched a big 5-3 win with major playoff implications. Arlington shortstop Anthony Pecora got the Tigers' bats going with an opposite field solo shot in the LMC Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Pitch hit at the right field fence. Track down and that is out of here. Anthony Bacor with a home run. Lamarnik is up 1-0 here in the bottom of the second. Opposite field shot. That ball kept on carrying. The right fielder just looked up. Couldn't do anything about that one. Reminds me of a shot I had in the backyard with the ball game yesterday. What a shot there by Pecora, and congratulations to the New York Rangers. Second year in a row, they were down three games to one, and they're moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Ever wanted to visit Ireland? Well, now you can, for free. Mamaroneck Public Library is featuring new artist Daniel O'Sullivan and his exhibit, Ireland, from May 1st to July 31st. Hi, my name is Dan O'Sullivan. I was born in Dublin, Ireland. Today I'm located at the Mamaroneck Library. I reached out to the library to uh, see if they'd be interested in showing my paintings. They invited me back for a longer exhibition starting in, um, in May and it's going to run through July. It's my goal with the series to um, 
to paint a picture more of the overall culture of Ireland, the people of Ireland, the character. These are my experiences growing up. As is typical in the west of Ireland, a man walking with his bicycle. This little island up here is known as Ireland's Eye, and this is the view from Hoth Pier. Uh, in North County Dublin. And this depicts a, uh, a farmer outside his thatch cottage uh, resting for a while and uh, after you know digging peat in the, uh, in the bog all day. You'll typically see on a nice sunny day where uh, the locals will sit outside and enjoy the, the song and maybe read the paper and pass the time. So in closing, I'd love to invite you to come on down to the Mamarnik Library and take a look at some of my originals. Um, and again, if you like, you can view some online, but I think it's really um, coming to the library and seeing the originals here, uh, you'll get a real sense for the, uh, you know, the colors and uh, perspective and so forth. Thought about going into broadcast journalism? I sure have. Some NBC anchors who also happen to be our neighbors spoke to a lucky group at Mamaroneck High School. Kat Galliano has the story. Do the names Michael Gargiulo, Erica Hill, or Kate Snow ring a bell? You may have seen them on TV, but did you know they're actually our neighbors? Tonight they're going to be talking about the future of broadcast journalism, so let's listen in. I just did a series on um, transgender kids uh, on Nightly News, and we did something different. We decided to purposefully put up the first clip, the first TV, if you will, piece. It wasn't actually on TV. We put it on Facebook. And sure enough, we've had more than 13 million people wow. watch just the Facebook post. People aren't always happy to see you. Early on, I remember being a reporter and having to knock on the doors of, of uh, homes where kids have been killed in accidents and stuff like that. You just have to look at that as part of telling the story. Blythe Hammer, the executive director of the Larchmont and Mamaroneck Continuing Education Center, tells us the reason behind the Notable Neighbor series. Really what we're trying to do is bring the community together um, in ways that are both intellectually stimulating and also in ways that bring people together just uh, to meet people with common interests. New York Times columnist Alina Tugin moderated the discussion where advice for future broadcasters and the new challenges they face were the highlights of the evening. What I would suggest to young people who are going to do this is, and we were talking about this before, if there's some interest or passion you have in your life that sets you apart, maybe it's a language you know, maybe it's a special knowledge of some subject or a country that you should really make that your selling point. And I have to say Sandy Hook too, just because when that happened, um, my, my son was the same age. And so, and that's not, you know, I think once you have children, things affect you so much differently. It doesn't mean you don't have a heart before you become a parent, but there is something about some of these terrible stories that we do that, that are important and that people need to know about that changes you and you have this feeling in your gut. And so for me, that was a really, um, that was a really tough one. This is just one example of the courses offered by the Larchmont and Mamarine Continuing Education Center. If you want to find out more about their programs, log on to www.lmcce.org. For The Local Live, I'm Kat Galliano. No, you are not seeing double. That's Samantha and Simon, our pet of the week. They are brother-sister kitten duo who are active and playful and looking for a home together. Please go to www.ny-petrescue.org to find out how to adopt them. Congrats to everyone who scored a nomination for the Community Awards. Your hard work is being recognized, and here are the nominees. It's award season. I hope you'll be joining me, Neil Patrick Harris, on June 19th to support and celebrate the men and women of all ages who create exemplary TV in our community. 
Here are the nominees. Well, I can't tell you now. We have to get back to the news. But right after, you can go to our Facebook page to see each category and who's nominated. We applaud their efforts. We wish each producer good luck. I hope you'll come to the VFW on Boston Post Road on June 19th at 7 p.m. to cheer everyone on. Mike Witch, what a tease you are. Well, anyway, thanks for watching this week's edition of The Local Live. Come back next week when our roundtable discusses the Mamaroneck parking situation with Chamber of Commerce Stephen Josephson and Trustee Leon Potok. For more information on the stories aired, you can visit our website, lmctv.org. If you have any comments, questions, or if you would like to volunteer, email us at thelocallive at lmctv.org. As always, I'm Anthony Carlo. We'll see you next week. Good night. Tell us what you think, in person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live.